I want to show you a quick um, tip with Photoshop on how to remove chromatic aberration. Now Lightroom has some fantastic options um, and some cool control for removing and for controlling chromatic aberration in your images, but it's not always 100% awesome. Like sometimes you just need that little bit extra work to be done to an image. Um, particularly when you want to zoom in on the image or you want to print it larger. Um, this here is a family photo shoot that we had done by a good friend of mine, um, Erica Jane Photography, um, based here in New Zealand. And um, I want to print this image quite big. I love this image and I just want to print it quite big on a big canvas. But when we get closer in, you can see that there's actually quite bad chromatic aberration on the side of my shirt here and up my arm. Um, and even worse on this side um, towards the edge of the frame which is quite normal for chromatic aberration for it to occur at the edges of the frame um, when we go wider apertures so I've tried to get rid of it in Lightroom and I wasn't 100% successful and I'm just not at a point where I'm, I'm happy with it so I would like to um, just work it a little bit further now like I say Lightroom has some cool options but this is where Photoshop is really powerful and that we have really have a lot of control over you know what we can do with our imagery so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get straight into the edit here um, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a copy of the background layer so I'm gonna head on over there and go duplicate layer and okay there I have my layer there now the next step is a bit weird and you may be thinking well this is crazy what are you doing Justin but basically just bear with me I'm going to apply a Gaussian, I think that's how you pronounce this word, Gaussian blur to the image and I'm going to push it to 15 pixels which is quite high and obviously it looks very blurry um, but that's okay just bear with me for now just go okay and what I'm going to do final step with this little little part of the process is I'm going to change my layer mode to color. Alright so now what we have is we've mostly got rid of the quite severe chromatic aberration and what it has done however is it's changed a lot of the other image um, of the rest of the image like for example my son's ear on the top here has kind of gone gray and my daughter's hair has gone kind of strange strange gray white color so what I'm going to do is I I want to basically paint back the areas that I don't want affected or another thing I could do is I could actually go back to how it was and paint in the areas that I do want to get rid of or paint away the chromatic aberrations so a good way to do that first of all is to create a layer mask and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill that layer mask by going command I on my keyboard um, I think it would be control I on a PC so basically command I and you'll see my layer mask is now filled with black and which is showing the chromatic aberration and then gonna uh, just go grab my brush tool and basically I am going to just paint away the areas that I don't want chromatic aberration so I'm gonna start here if you use your open your open and close bracket keys you can make your brush size bigger or smaller nice little keyboard shortcut there So I basically want the white to be on top. Now if you find that you've gone a bit too much and you're not happy with it, you could just go Control Z on your keyboard and it'll go back a step. Or you can use your history panel there. And basically we're just going to go nice and gently through the whole image. Now you don't want your brush too big because if you have your brush too big it's going to affect quite a lot of the image. Like if I go like that you can see it's actually causing quite a bit of grey on, on the shirt. And the shirt isn't grey, it's black. So you don't want that to happen. Um, now the problem when you're printing is something something I will say that, that I actually always notice myself is, is you notice so much more in printing. Um, you don't always notice it when you're looking at a screen, no matter how big your screen is. I have a nice size screen here, 27 inch, um, but you sometimes you just don't see things until they're in print. 
um, I can't say that enough. You know, the amount of times I've had to reprint stuff, especially for awards, um, I've sometimes printed the same image up to like 10 times because, you know, you just, when you're looking at prints, they just have a sort of this life to them that, you know, really makes the image come alive. Um, and, uh, okay, this little pot's going to be tricky. So I really want a nice small brush just to get rid. I don't want that gray to show. You see there, it's actually showing just a bit too much. So um, I'm going to flip my layer back around. And I'm just going to go over that nice and gently, nice and slow. Okay. So I've done a bit of a destructive edit here because I, I just want to show you how easy it is to paint that back in if you need it there you go so all i'm doing is i'm switching from the black and white here so it just reveals and conceals the layer so basically like paints it back in okay that little bit there is quite tough so i'm going to get rid of that there you go I might come back there and just do a bit of healing there just because that hard orange line is is getting to me a little bit and again like that's the kind of thing you will see in print and you know when people come around to your house or whatever wherever you put in these prints um, they might not notice it but you will <laughs> so if you're the kind of person where that kind of thing won't irritate you then that's cool um, if you're like me and you try and get things as perfect as possible then uh, you'll want to clean it all up all right let me just go through so this is a bit of the purple that we didn't actually see when we were zoomed out And just gently brush it, brush it away. This is probably the worst part here, so um, rather go in from the shirt rather than like in from here, because you see what's happening there is you're getting you're getting all of that orange, and you don't really want that. Now, depending on the colors in the image, this isn't always going to work. Sometimes it may require a bit more subtle treatment, um, in which case you may want to have a, a bit of an adjustment here with your opacity. I've got it set to 100 here because it's quite a hard line and I really just want to get rid of it. Um, you can see there, so I'm just going to switch. Oops, there you go. nearly done in this section now you might be saying to yourself well wouldn't it just be better if I bought a better lens sure it's always better if you buy a better lens it's always good to own good lenses and to spend your hard-earned money on good glass but this here is a 50mm 1.2 L-series lens um, by Canon. Now, I'm not saying that it's the best 50mm on the market, but it's a pretty good one. And still, when your aperture is pushed to the wide, it's just still going to get chromatic aberration. I actually um, I find the 85mm focal length, for some reason, I don't know what it is, the 85 more focal length seems to love chromatic aberration for some reason no matter what lens you get from which manufacturer or no matter what brand it's just something to do with 85 more that always gives quite nasty chromatic aberration all right i think that's a nice gentle edit and i'm happy with that i may come back later and smooth that out but just for the purpose of this um tutorial I just wanted to show you a quick edit um, 
might just zoom a little bit in here to my left hand. There you go. Thought I'd missed a bit. If you're finding there's too much gray, then you could go and play around with the opacity. I'm just going to change it. Whoops, not 6, but 65. I don't know why I choose 65. It's always just been something I've done. And you see that actually doesn't, it's not too bad. So what that's doing is it's just painting 65% opacity. That's 65% of strength, not a full 100%. All right, the rest of it looks pretty cool. Um, I may find some bits and pieces here and there that I might edit, but hey, look, that gives you an idea. Um, and basically, if I turn the layer on and off, you can see that chromatic aberration. And hey, look, if you're going to print an image and you're going to hang a, a photo up on your wall of your family, put some effort in and, and make it look awesome and, and you know get rid of those little nasty little uh, um, things that, that like chromatic aberration that can always seem to rear their heads. All right, done. Thanks, guys.